In Israel, you have to be in the army. Torah is my hero. And, uh, you know, the first time I met him, and heard his story, it was very emotional for me. Um, I was crying. In 1987, during the First Intifada, then Minister of Defense ordered the establishment of a new special unit in order to fight terror with minimal damage to none involved. The unit name was Dubdevan, which meant cherry in Hebrew. It was trained to operate in dense urban area to apprehend or naturalize terrorists using a variety of techniques. Dubdevan is the spearhead in the war against terror. The unit brings to justice those on the most wanted list. The fighters are selected in a rigorous process. Only 1 in 13 are allowed to start the training. 1 in 5 of those completes the grueling training process and becomes a Dudevant fighter who at a very young age feels responsible for the lives of all of us. My name is Dor Dagan and I'm a former uh, commander and a fighter in a very special unit in the IDF and also the founder of non-government, non-profit organization that helps the wounded soldiers in Lebanon. I first met Dora in April of this year. I met him through a good friend of mine in Israel. It was in the context of a conversation w with my good friend in which I told him that with the war and what's going on with America and Iraq, I wanted to do something. I wanted to help American soldiers. He told me I should meet his cousin, Dora. So uh, I met his cousin, Dora, and it uh, was a very moving experience. The unit of the van carries the heavy load of the fight against terror. A week after a suicide bomber exploded in Jerusalem, Dora two days after end of service, was asked to volunteer for one last mission. We are uh, called to, to catch the head of the Hamas in Bethlehem. It was responsible for a lot of people, uh, for the deaths of a lot of people, of innocent people. I mean, I've I done similar mission before, and uh, I know the area very well. So, uh, it was... Uh, it was not a question for me to come or not. It's like I felt it's, it is my duty. In the early morning hours, the soldiers from Dudevan took up positions in this neighborhood around the house of Mahmoud Abruda, head of the Zim al Qassam in Bethlehem, and the person who sent the suicide bomber to Jerusalem last week. The soldiers stormed into the house and, after a brief search, found the basement in which hid the wanted terrorists. I was directly uh, looking into the into the room. It's like I come into the room and look from something like five feet. I saw the terrorist through this hole looking at me, and a barrel of a gun through my face. I remember a silver gun, and I looked at him and I thought to myself, "Go, oh, get down, get down!" But uh, I didn't have much time. I get two bullets. The first one in the chest, going from here, one, one millimeter from, I don't know, one centimeter from my heart and to my back. And the other one, um, make sure, to make sure I was dead in the eye from here, and going from here, also get out from the, my skull. After a brief exchange of fire, the terrorists were killed. Abruda opened fire first. Four soldiers were wounded. One suffered a direct hit to his head and arrived in Adasa and Kerem in grave condition. Of the four wounded, two are in critical condition, one is moderately wounded and one is lightly wounded. They are undergoing tests and will reach the operating room soon. It's hard to describe, I mean, it was so much pain, but the pain doesn't matter. I was in, I was very calm, and this was my last moment, so I was very calm and thinking, I was 
I don't think I ever have so 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 much. Uh, I was bright and kind and calm, thinking, and suddenly I felt that I want to sleep, very good sleep, the best sleep. I, and then I understand that if I go into sleep, I will never wake up. So, for me, the struggle now, I understand this is not the fight for the country anymore. This is going to be the fight for my life. They told me that I will never walk again, I will never move my arm again, I will never breathe again. They don't know if I'm going to see again. And uh, the list go, goes on. And then I thought to myself, why to live? And then I, and then I uh, heard a strong voice in my head. And this voice was like, you can cancel it. It's like the general tell to a private what to do. It's the, you're not going to argue or something like this. It was, this is the reality and this is it. He told me three things. One, it's not for me but to God to decide if I live or die. The second one was that I, have, uh, I will have a meaningful life. And the third, that I will walk again. On these three things, I'm sure. It, I, mean, it, I mean, it's not something that uh, I can argue with myself or something. I'm sure about it. And I thought to myself, People get out from cancer, people get out from hate. I can be also an outlier. I can be also a, um, someone that gets out from the statistics, the doctor all the time speaking about statistics. I don't have to be in the statistics. His story is about a person, a person that despite he has enemies, actually went to risk his life because he was worried about the wife of his enemy. And this entire kind of experience of him going through and battling for survival and having doctors telling him things that weren't positive and he's not going to live, he, he beat the odds. Whatever the odds were, whether they were 1%, 0.001%, he beat them. I felt to myself, there is the values that they learn you in the army, never leave a soldier behind. And for me, it was obviously I, I can't be idle and not contribute. I have to do something. I can't, I see in it. I'm not living uh, for nothing. We're going to have our first annual benefit um, on September 27th at the Canal Room in Soho. It's the most important thing and the reason why we're doing this is I want people to hear Dror's story and I want this to have an impact on people. We're expecting about 200 people and we've done this in a very short amount of time. Um, everyone's a volunteer. We've done this in like, you know, six weeks, four to six weeks. And we've just been working like crazy. The key people in this organization, the people who are really, who really jump-started the organization and got us going are Robert Ventolo, Tali Geffner, Lena Schemmel, Robin Karras, and also my brother, Ezra Benson. It's amazing, I think, what we've done so far, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a success. I start to walk on my feet a little bit, you know, it's going to be 200 people, more than 200 people. So I have to speak something, to do something smart, you know. So, <laughs> so let's go. Uh, I will be bending.
Yeah, I do. Tell me good luck. <laughs> Another mission. Let's go. I just want to remember the right words and the right time, you know? For me, if it was in Hebrew, it was very easy. But uh, because it's in English, uh, I have to think not only about what I'm going to say, but how I'm going to say it. So it's like uh, thinking two times. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm good at that, so it's not going to be a big problem. We need to have more Jewish, more non-Jewish people aware of what's going on in Israel. And we need to take care of those people that are defending our freedom. The only way I knew how to do this was when I met Jor and I heard his story. And I knew that if the right people would hear his story, we could do something very special. In Hebrew, hero means to overcome. Um, in our culture, to overcome uh, your fears, to overcome uh, obstacles that life puts in front of you, is to be a hero. In that uh, sense of uh, uh, way, I think I'm a hero, uh, dealing with all these uh, difficulties, fears and uh, all the struggles. But in the other sense, I don't think I'm better than anyone else.
so tired, so 